This video is brought to you by Manscaped. More about them at the end of the video. Guys, here we go. We got Ryan Miller joining us right now. So I'm going to get him in. Joining us right now from... Uh, uh, Ryan, where are you right now? I can't. <laughs> nice. Uh, well, Cody's got uh, about three hours on the ice this morning. So just nice. got him out there. Well, thank All you right. for joining us. And Ryan, I'll start with congratulating you on the impressive fee of getting your number retired this season by Buffalo. Um, you know, can, can you just speak to a little bit about that? And, you know, I know as a kid, I'm sure you dreamed of playing in the NHL one day, but could you have imagined that, you know, you're going to get your jersey number retired by a, you know, NHL team that you played for for so long? No, definitely not. Big surprise, tremendous honor, and definitely something when you're, you know, as a goaltender at your routines, uh, you know, you spend time during the national anthems. I'm kind of looking around at the ceiling and you see a lot of the, the great players who've come before and they've been up there. It's certainly something that catches your eye. And you, uh, so to be considered uh, one of those players for the Sabres is, uh, you know, a dream come true for sure. Ryan, was there any moment in your career where, whether it was the team or yourself, where you felt like you had to redeem something, whether it was the the, the silver medal or a certain point in a playoff series or anything? Oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys, yeah, trying to find a spot to... No problem. To sit. Yeah, go for it, sorry. No, no worries. Um, was there any point in your career where, like, you had a moment where you felt like you need to, uh, whether it was yourself or the team, felt like you had to, like, redeem yourself on something like that, or whether it was a playoff series, the, the silver medal, or? I don't know about redemption so much as, you know, you're trying to just compete every year. I think that we always took the playoff series as steps forward, and we were having – uh, you know, a quality season if we were in contention for something. And the same goes for the silver medal. You know, it's definitely, a, you know, you look back on it, you, you, you wonder how things could have been different throughout the game or the tournament or whatnot. But uh, you come down to, you, you know, I feel like I did the best I could do. And, you know, that's how everything ended up. And I'm, I'm proud of what I was able to accomplish coming from where I come from. And um, that's how you kind of, park it but certainly the competitor in you wonders you know where little things could have been different but uh you know that's not something you have a you know a whole lot of control over when things are all over ryan i gotta ask you about 2010 because that was certainly a memorable year for you but i'm mm -hmm. going to start with the vesna trophy uh, what was that the best season of your career? And did anything feel differently about that year? Yeah, we just had a good vibe um, as a group. And then that kind of carried over into, you know, my play. Uh, I think that uh, I felt like I was kind of ramping up and reaching a, a point in my career where I was figuring some stuff out. And I had a good se some, uh, summer of training coming off an injury. Uh <laughs> I'd actually sprained my ankle a uh, year prior. And so I, I, uh, I had a lot of time to focus in the summer on how to put myself in a good position for the season and also a good position for uh, the Olympics. So, you know, it was really a, a conscious effort to be ahead of the game. And I think maybe my injury actually helped because I, I didn't really have an off season. You know, I, I did, I missed a big chunk of time. I, tried to come back and kind of came back early and tried to make the playoffs the season prior playing through pretty good pain. Uh, it didn't work out. So I essentially just kept rehabbing. And I think that actually helped. I, I was uh, physically, mentally ready and, and I was up to the challenge and it was a good time in my uh, career. I, I had enough experience to, make some corrections in my, my game and my mindset. And I was also hungry enough to put the effort in. So it's definitely a rewarding year looking back on it. Cause uh, a lot of effort went in 
ahead of time and, and a lot of uh, things had to go right. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it's good to look back on uh, in a way, but also bittersweet because we came up short in a couple areas that season. But uh, like I said, um, you know, you, you, you parked that and, you know, I, I did the best I could. Well, just to add on to that, not many men can get a standing ovation in Pittsburgh while Sidney Crosby got booed in that one moment. <laughs> so you were able to accomplish that. Anthony. <laughs> Small victories. No, um, Ryan, the- <laughs> Please like and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great hockey content and an entertaining interactive podcast. So check us out and our library of videos. Uh, in 2006, 2007, um, you know, you guys, the Sabres, you led the, you led the league in goals for the like 308 goals. And I always equate you guys to the NFL's version of the greatest show on turf, those Rams teams that were so high octane and, and scoring your Sabres were kind of the same way. Um, and you had a 911 save percentage that year, which I mean, right now probably equates to like 925 or even higher. So that's, that's really outstanding. But question is, did you have to change your approach to your play when you when you were playing in front of a team that was maybe so ru- run and gun and always looking for offense, did that make your job difficult to you at all? Um, no, it, it just was a different element. I, I played on different teams over my career. Like coming from Michigan State, we were pretty defensive orientated. And, uh, coming out of juniors, we were kind of middle of the pack. Uh, and our and junior hockey was not a whole lot of responsibility so i mean you're kind of used to running gun a little bit as you grow up uh and, but coming into pro i was used to the guys and our puck control was actually really good i think you know i'd be interested to see where we are with advanced stats now and how you know how our how we were driving the play and how often we had the puck but yeah creating offense leads to chances against as you've probably seen in these playoffs even the best teams give up what would be considered many years ago a terrible scoring chance against like that'd be all the, the media would probably talk about is that scoring chance or that goal against the way things happen but yeah, i think we've seen how things have shifted towards sacrificing a little bit uh to get the upside of possibly just controlling the play and scoring more goals so um yeah we were a pretty forward thinking team you know we can thank uh lindy ruff and, and darcy gear for you know having the forethought and putting together a group who could handle that situation i think we we tailored our third and fourth line to be a little bit different and our defense were encouraged to do things a little bit different at the time. And, and, uh, we benefited from having the puck on our stick a lot. And, but that means, you know, I'm going to see some two on ones, breakaways, some odd situations, but I think, you know, the same thing goes with a shootout. I've always kind of taken those opportunities as challenges that I'd like to meet and try to have fun with it. You know, if that makes any sense, like, yeah, as a goalie, you can't be out there judging your team and saying, oh, my God, I can't believe they let up this two-on-one while a two-on-one is happening. <laughs> it's just, it, it's just, okay, we got two-on-one. Let's, like, let's do this. Or, oh, it's a breakaway, and it's Yarmir Yager. Oh, this is going to be, <laughs> this is going to be a huge challenge, you know? Like, it's, yeah. it, you know, that was, I don't know, that was fun for me. It probably explains a lot of why I was able to, you know, be a goaltender and, and probably not suited for another position as well. Ryan, what were some of your uh, favorite away arenas to play in? Um, I think Montreal has always been a great one. Just the respect that they have for the game is outstanding. Uh, I, I just remember some games where they were trying to get into my head a little bit or like, you know, trying to like, boo and jeer and like all the stuff but then like I, I just thought it was so unusual and maybe some people might not pick up on this but like if you make a pretty good play or like an outstanding play as an even as an away player as on the visiting team like you'll get a portion of the crowd that actually applauds that and it's not because they're fans that have come to montreal to, to cheer for you it, it's because they're just montreal people who love hockey and they're like wow that was a great play and i've always thought that was cool and you can sense it in the crowd too. Like I backed up there before and things happen and they talk about how great the play was, no matter who does it. So I always loved that. Uh, plus the energy in the building is great. And then uh, Madison Square Garden was always cool. Um, and then, I don't know, just uh, 
just depending on the vibe, I guess, of the team you're going up against. You know, there's been ranks that had, you know, different vibe when the team was playing a different way or playing better. And so it's it's always been fun to travel around and bring the circus to town and, and have some fun. So, but those, those two cities stand out for sure. Ryan, so you were at Michigan State when the Cold War game was introduced. And then you had the honor of being in the first Winter Classic. Did you have any idea what you were going to be starting? No, and it, it's really cool how it kind of came about. Um, our, you know, our, one of our assistant coaches, Dave McAuliffe at Michigan State, was really behind, you know, pushing for this and trying to get the idea going. And I remember Michigan State really, you know, being excited by the idea and and when they kind of hinted that it might happen and then they're like, yeah, we're going to play at the football field. We're like, this is outstanding. This is an amazing idea. Like we were a pretty good team at the time. I think at one point we were ranked number one in the nation, probably the year prior uh, for a long time. Uh, so we were a confident group and, and we all looked forward to that, uh, that showcase, especially against Michigan. You know, at that time, our rivalry was, uh, you know, uh, full swing, uh, pretty evenly matched, and, and we can go back and forth a little bit. So it's it a lot of fun. Now, Ryan, shifting gears a little bit to the, the Stanley Cup final going on. Um, what, obviously, Tampa Bay picked up a big win last night, but as a goalie, um, can you speak to our listeners about, you know, Colorado, they're so fast and active, especially their D, you know, Beerum, Taves, McCarr, you know, Manson, um, Gerard, who's not playing, can move really well, and, you know, Eric Johnson. Um, so when you have a D that activates that well and is so fast, um, as a goalie, you know, what, what do you have to do differently to be aware of that and kind of counteract that? I mean, I think the patience is the key. You, you don't want to bite too hard when the play gets going kind of down below the, uh, the dot to your left or right. Uh, you know, they're going to be looking for somebody. Uh, it was so traditional. When I played, it was like a three on two or whatever. You come down the wing you're going to get a shot. You know, they're trying for a rebound. They're trying to beat you clean. But, man, the guys just do a great job holding the puck now and looking for uh, players activating or beating their checkup ice. Um, Colorado is just such a good team at making decisions and, you know, together in a fast way. Um, it's um, it, it becomes just like everything feels like it's coming downhill at you when you play against them. It's like – everyone's headed your direction and they do a great job of pressuring. If it doesn't work out for them, they've instantly entered into four check mode and it, 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 you know, it's hard to get the puck back down the ice. So they can be overwhelming to play against. It was interesting to see how uh, Tampa countered that last night. Uh, they played a little bit different game, I thought. So uh, good on them to make the adjustment and, 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 and get creative and, and kind of, send uh, Colorado back on their heels a little bit. So that's, that's the fun part about watching. Now, you, you played with Josh Manson in Anaheim, and I know uh, maybe to the media and the outside world, you know, he's more viewed as a guy who, you know, plays tough in the crease and physical, but he could really skate and provide some offense. So what, what was it like playing with him? Yeah, Josh is a great player. Uh, I think he gets more of the reputation because he's just willing to go play with the body. And I think his, his – his dad's uh, reputation also precedes him, but uh, Josh is a little bit of a throwback, but he, he's got a, enough skill where you know he's he's ready to enter the play and uh, just a big, strong body. He's able to kind of dive in when you, you don't expect it, and I think I think that's been the case a few times uh, uh, in this postseason. You know, it's been a little bit unexpected, but he, like jumping by McDonough in, in one of their games in Colorado. I mean, you don't think he's going to jump from, you know, below the hash mark or, or right below the dot there. So he thinks he's got a safe pinch and then uh, see you later. So good read by Josh and, uh, you know, great finish. I'd like to say I helped him out with that over the years. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Ryan, you, Buffalo has had a long line of, of great goaltending going from Tom Barrasso to Dominic Hasek to yourself. How was it to be the next in line after someone like Dominic Hasek and, and having to deal with maybe some of the media pundits saying that you might have had to try to fill his shoes to an extent? Yeah, I think when I got there, it was pretty apparent they were looking for something like that. It, it, he'd been gone about a year uh, Marty Biron and Mika Nornin were first round picks. And then I had a good college career and I was obviously expected to do something with that. So yeah, they were definitely looking to create the storyline and, and push. And I wore number 39 in juniors and, and into college. And it was a number that I actually really enjoyed. I wore it internationally. I've worn it internationally, you know, for USA and the second I got to Buffalo, I asked for number 30. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wanted, I wanted to, to blaze my own trail, and I, I didn't want the comparisons. Uh, Dominic's his own, you know, I mean, he's got his own style. He's got his own aura, persona. He, he's one of the, you know, the greatest goalies ever to play. And I just wanted to have my own identity and and I was lucky enough to kind of carve it out with a you know great group of guys we got you know my my group of boys who kind of came up through with like uh, Palmonville, Gostad, Roy, uh, Vanek uh, you know those guys down in uh, Rochester and really starting to build something together was you know that's what I was more looking forward to is like a team identity and my own identity and uh, you know lucky enough to look back now and say that you know we we were able to do that ryan by the way i gotta tell you one of the funniest commercials i ever saw was that old amp energy commercial that you did the yo mama fight in that (laughs) was that was that was always a great one um i do have to ask you this though uh looking because on top of all the accomplishments that i never got to list all of them vesna trophy winner silver medalist uh, winning is American goaltender of all time. Uh, you've had um, a rich hockey family. Like the Millers are pretty much royalty for American hockey. You had 10 uh, family members playing the NHL. Um, so I guess, is that, would that be more of a good novel for you? A sitcom you would write? <laughs> yeah, I think if you saw my brother and I running around the rink chasing my my cousins, uh, I think it'd be more of a comedy. Uh, we look, yeah. So to, just to clarify, it's ten Millers have played hockey in Michigan State, and then uh, there's been five of us in the NHL. Uh, my brother is a Stanley Cup champion with Anaheim. Uh, I think Kevin has two Olympics. I have two Olympics. Kelly played like thirteen hundred games. Kip won the Hobie Baker uh, in college. Uh, my cousins, Curtis and Taylor, came down from Calgary uh, just before I got to Michigan State. Uh, and then my brother capped it off when he went there, too. So, you know, my, we've had a lot of uh, hockey. You know, my grandfather came down from Canada in the 1950s, and he was the first one to go. Uh, so we're pretty proud of where we came from. Uh, you know, I'm I'm glad Grandpa did, or else we might be farming up in Saskatchewan still. Um, <laughs> but uh, but um, no, he he took a, a he took a chance in the 1950s. It wasn't probably all that normal to cross the border, go down to the United States, and attend college uh, and and play hockey is a, the primary uh, reason behind it. So you know he took a risk and and took a chance, and it, you know. It was. A, it's actually a pretty cool story uh, when you you look at how many people uh, in our family were able to be impacted by Michigan State. Uh, it's not just uh, the hockey players; it's also uh, other parts of the family. So it's pretty cool. Now, Ryan, uh, be- before we let you go, I own, you know, as you know, the off season is often referred as a silly season for agency trades. Um, a lot of the the media makes a big speculates about players wanting to go home. Like for instance, Johnny Gaudreau, top free agent, he's from South mm-hmm. Jersey. So a lot of media and fans speculate, oh, you know, he's going to sign with the Devils or sign with the Flyers. <laughs> um, as a former player yourself, um, is that is that a thing? Do you guys is playing going home to play at home? Um, is that something that players really want to jump at the chance? I know everyone's different, but is that something that 
players really prioritize or is as much other things that you put ahead of just going to play for your hometown team? Yeah, I hate to give the boring answer, but they're, they're, I think it's pretty up to the individual. I, I can say that, uh, you know, it's, I was proud that I was able to kind of leave home and then go build something. And then, uh, you know, it would have been nice at some point to say that I, I had come home to play, especially with my brother being in, in Detroit. But, you know, you had other goalies at the time who had been building something. And, and like, I think Jimmy Howard was starting to kind of build something there more when, uh, when maybe I would have had the opportunity. And it just felt more like, well, I think I have some other opportunities happening. And, you know, I think with the forwards and stuff, maybe they got a little more flexibility. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I think that it's interesting, though. You know, Goudreau has been a, a great player for the Flames. You know, you know, we're talking about somebody who could become a historic player for the Flames. So, I mean, you have that to consider as well. I mean, that's something to factor in when you talk about players and their legacy. And yeah. But, or maybe it's just easier to go close to home and, and he's maybe you know for me for sure you know i factored in like when uh noreen my wife and i were married and she had a lot of work uh and based out of uh, the west coast uh, a lot of my thought process was well how can i make this easier on our family and you know and uh vancouver worked out to be a step closer that was a little bit easier uh and then when we had kids or uh, we just had another one uh we're you know we're having an easier time to be, you know, more immediately around the, the LA area. So Anaheim made a lot more sense. So there's different stages in everybody's life. And it's interesting where everyone ends up, but, you know, Johnny has a chance to be a kind of a historic player. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him stay. Yeah. Well, so, so essentially no, uh, no Tom Brady story for you. We, we can't, we won't expect to hear you announce that you're coming back like in the next week or so. Right. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'm. I got. I get winded if I'm. I'm shagging balls for the kid or doing something like that. It's, it, I don't think it's. I don't think it's worth the uh, traumatic tendon injuries that would be happening. I, I. I did tell the guys in Anaheim that they want somebody to come out and and, and play a little bit. When uh, I, I don't expect their goalies to be around. You know, Stoli's gonna. I think he's getting married, and, and Gibby's back home with a couple kids. So. You know, I told them if they need anybody, I'd maybe pop in once in a while just to kind of scratch an itch. But, yeah, I, the most I've done is I played goalie about three times for a bunch of six, seven-year-olds. And uh, my, save, my save percentage was about, you know, if I could – basically, I'm trying to get out of the way to make them feel good. <laughs> and, and, all, and then all I got – and I'll tell you about this generation is like, – and I just got endlessly – chirped and they were at, all the kids were asking their parents like how i could have possibly been an nhl goaltender <laughs> <laughs> like, it is so easy to score on <laughs> yeah. uh, are there um are there men i mean if you wanted to are there men's leagues out there for you to play in like for me and my co-host here uh we played against benoit hoag here on long island like he was still skating around but um is that yeah. an option too even if you wanted to out there yeah, i've gotten some invites but i can tell you it'll be as a you know I'd be skating. I'm not going to put the pads on to, uh, yeah, it just doesn't seem like a, you know, something I'm interested in. <laughs> it, it, I, I can tell you from experience that people try really, really, really hard when they're, uh, you know, if they're not a uh, pro player and then they get a chance to shoot on a pro goalie. Mm -hmm. And it, it generally ends up with a lot of shots around the collarbone and up around the head. So oh, uh, yeah, yeah it's just, uh, it just doesn't sound like a lot of fun to go do that. <laughs> get, get, get your bell rung a bunch of times for some guys to, you know, have a few laughs, so, but I'll go out and I'll shoot the puck a little bit and mess around. We'll see. Well, nice. Well, thanks for joining us, Ryan. Appreciate taking time out watching your kid play. We really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, hope that, um, you know, you, you enjoy your, you know, your new, your new chapter in retirement and, I uh, can't wait to see uh, number 30 go up in the rafters in Buffalo. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. I'm excited as well. That's awesome. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Thanks Ryan. Lot, Ryan. Thanks, right. Ryan. See you, see you guys. That's awesome. Ryan Miller, everybody. Uh, the 2010 Vesna Trophy winner and about to have his number retired by the Buffalo Sabres this year. Um, 
you know, we were talking about this earlier uh, before we went on, Anthony. It's it's not every day that if you play for a franchise, you're either the best in everything or you're second best to Dominic Hasek. There's never any problems with that. Yeah. Yeah. That That's why I wanted to ask that question, because, like, I, I could only imagine the, the, the pressure that he probably had felt, um, you know, going in there and. Basically, I mean, there was a short period of time where Marty Biron was like the guy, but like Ryan Miller was always their top prospect. And he was the guy I just remember back then hearing about him as a prospect and being yeah. like, okay, like he, he's he's really the guy. Biron was more, we love you, Marty, but you were kind of a placeholder for him. So, oh, that he was highly touted, if I recall correctly, coming in, especially that year that Hasha got injured. But, Marty Bird. Like, well, yeah, Marty he was. Bird. Yeah, but Ryan Miller was – he was always the guy. He was always like the – they were looking at him and they thought he was going to be the guy from what I remember, so. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this and right now the poll question's out there. What was the best performance by a USA goalie? Uh, Anthony, do you have a, do you have one that you could say with that? Is it Ryan what? Miller? Is it Mike Richter? Best performance by a USA goalie. Ah, that's tough. I mean, yeah, you could say Richter um, for sure. You know, when he won the cup in some of those games, uh, Ryan Miller's performance, the whole Olympics uh, and gold medal game, that was definitely one of them. Um, but yeah, you know, listen, we Ryan Miller, um, U.S. hockey goalie royalty for sure. Uh, he, yeah, he oh, he's on the short list for the best. Three, 391 wins the yeah. most of all time for a U.S. born goaltender. I mean, it's more than Barasso, it's more than Van Biesburg, it's, it's more than Richter. It's more than yeah. anyone. So, uh, yeah, but if you had to pick a 1A and a 1B, I mean, it would be Miller and then in the 2010 Olympics and then Richter in the 1996 World Cup just because if you look at the rosters, the rosters for both of those Canadian teams are impressive. Like you have – in the 96 World Cup, you have Gretzky, Messier, Sakic, Lindros, uh, Eiserman. Flurry, like uh, coffee, Bork. I mean, uh, up and down. There's there's talent left and right on that Cal uh, Canada team. And then Crosby, Aginla, um, Thornton, uh, Getzlaff. Uh, I mean, you go up and down the lineup, and it, it's it's Hall of Fame lineups on both of these cards. And Ryan Miller dragged a U.S. roster that. No offense to Jamie Langenbrunner, but Jamie Langenbrunner being on the Olympic roster shows you like the. The, the kind of depth that the U.S. was lacking at that time as compared to Canada in terms of, like, pure scoring mm -hmm. power. So Ryan Miller really dragged that team uh, all the way to the finals and to overtime and almost got them a gold medal. I never got to ask him uh, about is that the best game maybe he's ever played in because that, that game was still amazing. By the way, number one right now in our poll, Jim Craig and Lake Placid. And he was uh, just fantastic yeah. in that entire series. So if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.